my fellow citizens. This is an official declaration of martial law. An alien creature reached our beloved Earth. A parasite. A coward that hides in our very skin. Changing bodies as we change clothes. Even if we cannot pinpoint its exact location, employing the full resources of our intelligence, we determined its goal. This sucker wants to take control of my body and unleash our devastating nuclear arsenal upon the world. Well, I say f*** that. Police officers and soldiers will patrol the streets and the entirety of our special forces will be deployed. Everyone in our country, honest citizens as well as criminals and convicts, are allowed to carry weapons and have permission to join the hunt. The order is to shoot on sight. I repeat, shoot on sight. I will transport the activation codes of our nuclear weapons in an ultra-secure secret base. From there, I will direct our efforts with tactical knowledge that only a seasoned veteran can offer. I am almost sorry for this pathetic life form. Coming from space, it's probably never heard of us. You will know soon enough that no one messes with our country. Let us show him what we're made of. Thank you. God bless you all. Greetings, everyone. My name is Etterville, and I welcome you all to my blindless play of Hyper Parasite, a twin stick shooter slash brawler developed by Troglobytes Games and published by Houndpick Games. This game was released on April 5th, of 2020, and for full disclosure, I received a key from the developers in order to LP this title. And as is a blindness play, I apologize in advance for any silly mistakes or false assertions I'll make. Oh goody, apparently to reset the control options. I want this off. In this game, we take on the role of the titular hyperparasite. The rest of the story was already showcased during the start of this video. I have played several twin stick shooters in the not too distant past, so I'll be interested to see how this game stacks up to them, especially in terms of content, progression, and difficulty. Judging by the reception this game got while I was in early access, I'll be in for a good time. Or at the very least, decent. Seems like I can snatch and ditch bodies pretty quickly. Starting off with pretty easy to defeat fodder. So we can't possess all enemies. That way, the possession mechanic doesn't just destroy the game's balance. Good to know. After all, all these rooms are procedurally generated. I don't exactly trust you, though. You may be a hostile alien species. So we're just here for the money. In before we can fight them for discounts. And thus ends the tutorial. Pretty short and straight to the point. The outskirts. Ah. 
Eh, still don't trust you. So by doing so, we can upgrade our Parasite. Defensive, attack, or number of lies. Let's go with attack. Do these persist between runs, or does it only last for this run? I'm gonna try the police officer. Unlike the hobo, he does have to reload his primary weapon after a while. So that's how we unlock more characters. Let's unlock the Ghost Hunter. That will be useful for future runs, in case I want to start off with an edge. Yeah, they're permanent, but do they last between runs, or only in the same run? I also gotta be on the lookout for any secrets. Okay, for some of them I have to manually tap it. Not good, I need to get a host body fast. If I take any damage while in this form, I will die. Frank Donovan. So mini boss or boss battle? And I'll take your brain, thank you very much. Uh, let's get an extra life, just for some extra insurance. I like how we have these teleporters in the world. 
That reminds me of Monolith. And knowing my luck, I probably missed one or two optional upgrades or goodies. I just wish I could use the mouse for teleporting around. Oh, so we can possess these other people. Once we get their brains, we'll need to spend enough money in order to unlock them. Oh, I want to try him out. I didn't mean to shoot you there, I wanted your body. So once I acquired a brain and pay enough money, I can then possess them in the world. Those lock icons are only temporary. I guess these are the shortcuts, or they lead to more difficult areas. Same with this one. That's probably the room exit, but before I can enter it, I need to defeat the boss. So the person I faced off against before, that was just a mini boss. Let's try out the paper girl. So she throws out papers in a sort of shotgun spread, but I don't need to worry about reloading. Oh, I have to attack these vehicles, sorry about that. I didn't think these were mook spawners. But once their health bars get low enough, they will actively try attacking me. Thank you, random paper girl. She got one shot though.
Is there anyone who I can possess, please? Thank you, hobo. Okay, that's one of them down. That was the least dangerous one of the two. These fights will get easier in the future as I unlock more characters. I know the paper girl is a better option in terms of DPS, but she's a riskier pick. I always want to keep one person who I can possess on the field. Well, glad to know this game is not easy. Collect only one brain at a time. Oh, I'm still holding this person's brain. I didn't deposit it. Now it's in. For a moment there, I got scared during that battle, once I was back down to the naked parasite. I'd rather have more people to possess than more upgrades. Bowels of Asia Town. Asia Town or Underground Temple. Seems I can't access these yet because I need the passwords. But I can go into Asia Town. Clear. Already I see multiple alternate routes I can take through the stages. Asia Town. Remember everyone, this is a roguelite, not a roguelike. So this follows the pattern of live, get money and persistent upgrades, die, and use those upgrades during your next run. 
and so on and so forth. I'm glad to see that all enemies clearly telegraph their attacks. I got too close there. I see new enemies responding in so I can possess them, but I don't have them unlocked yet. Secret code. I guess that's how I unlocked that one area. Rats, I need to get back to a shop. I'm in a really bad spot now. They just keep spawning in from everywhere. Thanks to all those attack upgrades, the Parasite on its lonesome is dealing a decent amount of damage. Ah, I forgot one of them control projectiles at me. I won't go there just yet. First, I want to deposit the brain at the nearest shop. I could get close to the enemies and shotgun them, but it's a tad too risky. The Hyper Parasite's true potential is by possessing enemies, and if I can't do that, it's really at a disadvantage. I just wish there was at least a weak enemy I could possess here. Maybe that's why the game gave me the option to save and quit, 
once I defeated the first boss. When I first played this game, I totally expected I could possess most of the enemies from the get-go, but apparently not. It's limited this way to set up the progression system. Ah, uh, there you are. Wait, I don't have any one of them? Oh, there it is. Don't have enough money for that. This is where storing the bodies would be useful, I guess. Ah, uh, might as well. I'm gonna die soon anyways. Let's see what was down over here. Sure, more resistance. Okay, that was just a free secret. I was worried there was gonna be an extra arena there. Seems like you can temporarily stun weak foes if you hit them. Okay, I got the ninja. This is where I should have saved up the money for. It was kind of foolish to dump all my funds into the lightning guy. Oh sure, let's face off against the ancient warrior with the naked parasite. The ancient warrior. Well, that was fast. I'm pretty sure this game has an achievement for completing a run without possessing anyone. This video has gone on for 30 minutes, so I think this is a good time to end it off. So we start off with Act 1, although I didn't encounter over half these enemies, perhaps they're in those optional areas. And I may attack too, but I wasn't able to possess any of these characters. Nonetheless, I am enjoying this game. The controls are crisp, all the enemies properly telegraph their attacks, and each of the characters have their own attacks. I am thankful that this game is not on the easy side, and the first boss battle, although very straightforward, can catch you a bit off guard, as those projectiles can one or two shot most of the starting characters you can possess. That is, unless you take multiple defensive upgrades, which I didn't. I will have to see how much of the unlockables persist between runs, but I'll figure all of that out during the next episode. Well then, thanks for watching, and have a nice day.